John Walls is the deep man. Churchill looks like they may be coming hard. He gets it away, and it's a low one. kick. And they're going to have a chance to return if he can get anything at all. Great tackle. Not much. Number seven is John Saunders making a nice tackle. So Churchill's going to be pinned deep in their own territory about the 11-yard line. Once again, George, defense and kicking. Excellent coverage on the punt. They've got Churchill right where they've got. They're really going to have to be champions to earn this now. They mark the ball on the 12-yard line, so Churchill has one minute and eight seconds to cover 88 yards. It certainly can be done, Coach. But as we said, <laughs> we've Churchill, seen him do it. That's Churchill true. is a grinded out kind of offense. They're going to have to come up with a big play somewhere in this drive. McCampbell back to pass, being chased by Slater. And he's. Nope. Got him I, on the one yard oh, line. I, Boy, I thought was... Slater had him. I really thought Slater had him in the end zone. That would have just about done it. Ball down at the, about the half yard line. 49 seconds Locks left. Running. To try and stop the clock, I'm sure, by throwing the ball out here if they can. McCampbell still at quarterback. Rolling right, looking downfield. Oh, oh. no. Agisatellis and A.J. Jones right there looking for it. Agisatellis almost had it. And that would have been the ball game. 34 seconds left on the clock. It is stopped. 10 to 7. Judson winning it right now. Churchill deep in their own territory. George, well, this, this is the toughest situation you could ever get into. I'm sure they're really searching for something to get them out of the hole, get the clock stopped where they can get a couple of more long pass plays off. 21,000 people are standing in this stadium. There's Kamalander. He's in now. Out to the right side, looking for a receiver. Threw it a little bit too high. Possibly a catchable ball. He threw it to Wally McCampbell, of course. And when Colander comes in, they'll move Wally to the wingback spot, George, so that he can kind of get loose outside or wide. That makes it fourth down. You've heard that line, Coach, about having your back against the wall. In this case, it's your back against the goal line. Oh, it is. If they get any further, they'll be on Hildebrand or someplace out there. 29 seconds left in this game. Don't notice that anybody's left the stadium, do you? I don't think anybody <laughs> has. We got some empty seats in some of the end zones, but I think they've just moved around to get a little closer to the uh, middle of the field to see what's going on. This is much the ball game I think we all expected, just like the Hearst Bell and, and Euless Trinity ball game. Two even football teams and two excellent football teams. Two just great, great defenses. I think when you talk about high school football teams and and great defenses, you can legitimately call these two teams uh, teams with great defenses. Yes, they are. They're team defenses, and they, and they, they really complement. All the players complement each other tremendously well. They play together. Very disciplined group. Conalander's back in the game at quarterback, so Wally will probably be moved out to one side again. I don't see his number in the huddle, but he's possibly down there. Fourth. Fourth down. Ball is on the one-yard line. They've got 21 yards to go for a first down and 29 seconds left in the game. Mark back to pass, rolling right deep in the end zone, throws it out, cut! Caught it. 88, Not far enough for a first down. But, no. it, but it won't be far enough for a first down, apparently. We'll see. See where they mark it, see what it looks like. I don't think it's anywhere close. Great pressure. Look at the pressure here from Arnold Baker once again. Arnold oh. Baker, Kenneth, and McBynum. McBynum. Tremendous pressure from those guys. Good play, good catch, but just not enough. And I think, Coach, unless something really strange happens here, we're going to see Judson advancing in this playoff. And certainly deservedly so, although we certainly feel like the Churchill played an outstanding football game. These Judson kids, they did not ever give up any moment in the ball game. Just like you had talked about, they were waiting to break a big one. It was one play. Judson offense didn't do a whole lot the rest of the game, but there was that one play, the 63-yard pass from Alan Deere to J.J. Lewis. It's always there. Alan Deere brings him up this time, and he's just going to fall on the ball. Clock running, 16, 15, 14, 13. I don't have to tell you what's happening here. Great to see the football players on both sides embrace. It's a fine football game. That's it. Time has run out. Judson wins it 10 to 7. They will now go on to meet either Beaumont, Westbrook, or Dickinson. Those two teams playing this afternoon in the Astrodome. And let's
let's just watch what's going on down on the field. A very disheartened group of Chargers. They have to be very disheartened. They played a good ball game. And it was exactly as you mentioned at the beginning of the game. It was Churchill, play after play after play coming at you. But Judson with the rifle. You had a classic drive of, Jud of Churchill, and then you had the classic big play of, of Judson, the way they've lived all season long. And just as we talked about, great defenses and the kicking game once again with uh, uh, Valderanos and, Balderas, yeah. Balderas and uh, Martin. Uh, Judson has a very, very good football team as their record speaks for him. And, uh, Rick Lozano is down on the field right now, and let's see if we can uh, track him down and see if he has tracked down any one of the coaches. All right, that's it. As you can see, there's a whole lot of confusion down there, but a whole lot of happiness for the folks in the red suits. Rick trying to track down Coach Arnold right now, and I understand he's got him in his sights. We should hear from Coach Frank Arnold of the Judson Rockets in just a moment. Again, 10 to 7. Judson winning it, and again, pretty much the kind of day, the kind of game we expected. Coach Arnold's got a crowd around him down there. We'll try and get some stats for you here. Uh, officially, we'll have them later on, I suspect. But in the meantime, we'll see what we can pick up. The big play, of course, was the 63-yard pass from Deer to J.J. Lewis. That's the one they're going to be talking about tomorrow and for a long time after that, probably. George, was that the only pass completion that they had? I think it was. I don't remember. They had... We're getting from our uh, stat man, Joe Cecina, here that there were two pass completions by Alan Deere this afternoon, one for zero yardage, one for 63 yards and a TD. We're going to go down to Rick Lozano on the field right now with Judson coach Frank Arnold. Okay, George, we're down on the field. Coach if we can see him. Frank Arnold, it is absolute chaos down here. I don't know if you can hear me. I'm going to continue along as though we do have an interview. The uh, school song from Judson being played. Coach, uh, first of all, congratulations and a great victory for you and your Rockets here today. Rick, I, I really can't say anything. I, I'm just amazed at these guys. They, they come back and we get pretty well whipped the whole ball game. But they've got the poise and the character to come back and make the big play when it counted. That big play. Well, has a great football team. We were very, very fortunate to make the big play. Coach, that was your first pass completion of the afternoon. The 63-yarder to J.J. Lewis couldn't have come at a better time. Rick, that's about all we did offensively all day. Uh, you know, like I say, they had a great defense. Uh, I, I, they played a great football game. Our kids made the big play. We've lived by it. They knew they had to stop it. They didn't. That's what it comes down to. We talked about both defenses being able to shut down the other team's offense all afternoon, even though there were several key plays in the ball game that could have turned the tide. Well, they, you know, uh, it's just one of those things. We got a great athlete in J.J. Lewis. Uh, uh, you know, he made the big play. That, you, you can't say anything except they stopped us nine-tenths of the ball game, but they didn't stop us at one-tenth, and that was the ball game for them. Coach, congratulations on a great victory. I know you look forward to next week. Go get them. We're just glad to be playing. Thank you. That's Coach Frank Arnold of the victorious Judson Rockets. Let's go back upstairs now to George McKenzie. A very happy group of Judson people down there, that's for sure. Got a couple of quick stats for you. Judson, 64 yards rushing, 63 passing, but that 63-yard passing statistic is a little deceptive. It was one pass, and it was the one that made the difference in the game. Four first downs, two penetrations, two turnovers. Churchill with 160 yards rushing, 47 yards passing, nine first downs, two penalties, four turnovers. Statistically, you've just about got to give the game to Churchill, but Judson is going to go on in the state playoffs against either Beaumont, Westbrook, or Dickinson. We'll have more information on that later on tonight on News Center 4 with Rick Lozano. We're going to wrap it up from here right now. Again, the final score, Judson 10, Churchill 3. This is George McKenzie thanking Mike Garner from Alamo Stadium for a very, very good broadcast. We'll wrap it up from here, and we'll give you over to the uh, studio now, and we'll pick up CNN headlines in progress.